Hey guys, good morning. So this is not something you're gonna see a lot of on this channel, but I'm up before the sunrise. We've got a lot to get done today and I wanna get an early start on it. And so I'm out in the camper, which is actually being used as my office until I get my shop built. And we're gonna go over the design phase of today's video, which I'm calling the garden bed bed. So we're gonna be converting the bed frame that Jessica brought home from the antique store into the garden bed that we discussed. So I'm gonna try something new on um, sketching this out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if, it, if I like it and you guys like it, then we'll use it again in probably a future video. Uh, we don't have much time before the sun gets up over those pine trees and I wanna be able to get outside and hit the ground running as soon as there's enough light to see. Okay, so the idea I had was using my tablet to draw on a picture of the bed frame. I feel like this will actually help me communicate and convey my ideas better than trying to draw the bed frame and the modifications that are the stuff that we're adding to it to make it into a garden bed. Um, it might get, I thought it would get confusing. So we're gonna try this out and see how it goes. All right, so here's the side profile of the bed frame. My ideas is to change this into a garden bed. I wanna fill in this point underneath the rail down to the ground. I did take a measurement on that and it is 10 and a half inches. So I went through and looked at the different lumber I have and I've got a stack of one by eights that will get us most of the way there, probably about up to there. So I'm gonna have to cover this other two and a half inches with a strip of something. Um, I'm thinking I may use some of the one by sixes I've got left over because I can rip two strips of two and a half inches, so one for each side um, on one one by six. But essentially I'm going to go from the ground up to the bottom underneath this rail, this bed rail, all right, with cedar boards. And that's gonna work on both sides and on both ends. Okay, so to secure those, I've decided to use some of the 2x4s that we have that are true 2x4s. So that means that they're actually 2 inches by 4 inch. Um, I've got some of the 3x4 posts that we used for our other garden beds, but that's a little bit overkill. Considering that this bed is actually fairly small, um, and I've got lot, a lot more 2x4s than I have of the 3x4 posts. So I'm going to run 2x4s in the corners like right here. Okay on all sides. So imagine that's a two by four. And then I'm gonna run one in the middle. Sorry guys, I'm not the best artist, but you get the idea. I'm gonna run these to the top of this rail. So on the inside, they'll run to the top. And the one by fours are gonna stop underneath. All right, so actually you'll see the golden si uh, side rails for the bed frame um, once I get done building it. Now I'm doing that for a particular reason. I've got this top-down photo to try and help explain a little bit about what I was meaning. Okay, from the top down, these are the 2 by 4s Okay, Okay, the reason I wanted to show this uh, perspective is because, like I said, the one by is sitting underneath the rail. The two by four is sitting, is gonna be cut to the top of the rail. Now the reason that that's important is because I'm gonna run a one by four cap, kinda like I did on the other garden beds, that'll sit on top of those rails and on top of these two by fours, right? From those posts, and then we'll run it across run it this way. Across this way. Well, now that we've got that part done, let's get out there. Hopefully we don't run into any problems or issues with the design. I've given it a lot of thought. I think it's gonna work out good.
All right, guys, here's that early start I was talking about. It's just after sunrise. Uh, I did uh, get my maple latte already, and so we're ready to hit the ground running. Um, we're gonna go grab materials, then we're gonna swing by my tool trailer and grab the tools that we need, and then we're gonna go get started on building this uh, garden bed bed. All right, now that we've got the lumber, which I went ahead and grabbed some extra boards in case uh, I make a mistake, which happens more often than you'll see on videos. But uh, sometimes, you know, make a mismeasurement or if the design in the sketch phase doesn't quite come together, I've got some 
different sizes of boards. So I've grabbed some extra one by fours and a couple extra one by sixes in case I need to use them. If I don't, I can always put them back. And this way, while I'm in the middle of building it, I don't have to run back over to the material pile and grab extra boards. I can just pull them off of the stack that I grab. All right, now that we've got lumber, before we head over to the garden to get started on building, we've got to get our tools. I'm gonna to go over my tool list. You don't have to stick to this. You don't need everything that I'm going to use. Obviously, you could do it a different way. I feel like there's probably some things that are required, such as something to mark with, measure with, uh, keep a straight line for when you're cutting, things like that. Honestly, those things are the most inexpensive tools to get. And after being a carpenter for a while, I've accumulated a collection of tape measures, pencils, Sharpies and speed squares or carpenter squares. It seems to be a very normal thing for carpenters. All my carpenter friends seem to have a similar size collection. I think it has to do with the fact that you'll be working on something and you'll set it down, you'll leave it at a job. It's very similar for me as Jessica and her coffee mug, especially on a contained job site. I usually don't like walk around the farm and just set it down somewhere random. But if I'm working in a certain space, I'll set it here when I go to do something and then I'll get back to my saw and I won't have my tape measure. And I know a lot of you are thinking like, why don't you have a tool belt? I've never really been into uh, tool belts. I use them occasionally, um, especially if I'm doing something like framing. Um, but for finished carpentry, I actually don't really use a tool belt and maybe I should. Then I could contain all the stuff that I set down and lose, but I just haven't done it yet. And honestly, at this point, I may never make the jump. So we'll just, it's fine. We're just gonna go forward with the way that I, I do things now. And you know, if I change it, then you guys will be here to, to see it happen. Anyways, let's go over tools. So I've pulled out our speed square, a pencil for marking. I've got my measuring tape. I grabbed a 16 foot because we're not going anything further than that. And I don't like carrying around a bigger measuring tape than I need. You know, a 30 foot measuring tape is a heck of a lot heavier than a 16 foot. So when I have a smaller job, I use a smaller tape measure. I've got a pouch of three inch screws. This should be more than enough. It's the star head deck mate. Got impact drill with a star head bit in it. I've got exterior nails in case anyone didn't know. Uh, they actually have interior and exterior nails. I know that a lot of people who've done uh, construction and carpentry will know that. This is for the people who don't. Uh, make sure if you're working on something outside, building something in the garden, uh, you know, framing up a garden bed or anything that's gonna get uh, weather on it, Make sure you get the galvanized exterior nails. The interior ones will rust out a lot faster and then you'll have to be making repairs. I've got a nail gun, a little 25 foot hose, my battery operated compressor, and I'm actually gonna use my miter saw to make our cuts. I'll make a couple of suggestions of things you don't have to do my way. You don't have to use a miter saw to make these cuts. You could use a skill saw. Um, I am making some angled cuts for the cap and I generally do not like to make angled cuts with a skill saw. There are carpenters who can do that and do it well. I'm not one of them, so I know my limits. And if I'm gonna be doing any kind of angled 45s to get uh, joints to meet up properly, I'm gonna use a miter saw. The other thing is, is the nail gun and the compressor isn't required. I do that whenever I'm constructing something, especially when I'm by myself. Like I did on the garden bed video, I'll use it to just tack the lumber in place and then I'll come back through and screw it together. The reasoning behind that is that, especially by yourself, you know, it's really hard to hold up a board, put a screw uh, on the end of a drill and get it to bite and sink down all while holding everything in place. Um, it's just, it can be difficult. It's a lot easier to hold everything in place and just grab the nail gun and just shoot a nail because I can do that one handed pretty good. And that's what I mean by tacking things in place. And I'm just putting one nail on each side to kind of hold it in place. Then I can actually fine tune the squareness and the you know flushness of the boards and the posts and all that stuff before I put the screws in. To get started, we're gonna do a bunch of pre-cuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and get all the stuff that I already know 
the dimensions on and get it cut and ready to assemble and then we'll take measurements for the finishing touches. To start, we're going to be cutting the posts. I know that we need six of those at 12 and a half inches. Now, just to point out, if you're ever gonna be working with rough cut lumber, you need to make sure that you put a fresh edge on the ends because the ends of uh, fresh milled lumber is never squared. And to get an accurate measurement, you need to make sure you put a, a nice clean edge on it. So we're gonna start with that. All right, next we're gonna do the one by eights. We need two of those at 74. Now we need two one by eights at 39 and a quarter. So we actually need a one by six cut at the same measurements, one at 74 and one at 39 and a quarter to pair with the one by eight to make up the 10 and a half inch distance. I've got everything cut that I can. I'm not going to make any of the cuts for the cap until I actually get everything assembled. And then I'll pull measurements to make sure I get exact. And that's to cover me in case things, which is likely, but in case things are a little out of square, I can make adjustments on the cap trim rather than just assuming I'm gonna get it perfectly square because I'm also working around the middle of that bed. It's safer until I've got the wood assembled and it kind of in with the bed frame, pull our measurements and then we'll do our one by four cap. Right, I've got the sides assembled. 
Okay, so the reason these are higher is like we said on the drawing, this is actually gonna sit up flush with the top of this rail, but the one by is actually gonna sit up underneath the, uh, the bottom of the rail. We'll attach our cap over the top of the bed rail and the two by four. The problem I'm running into right now is that there's kind of a hump in the ground here. So when I put the boards up underneath it and then set the bed frame on top, the measurements are right, but it's out of whack. And so what I'm gonna have to do is I think I'm gonna go ahead and cut the fabric out underneath where the bed's gonna go, which we were already gonna do. And then I can take a shovel and kind of flatten that out. So that way when I set the boards up in here, it should help the bed frame sit on top of the boards like it's supposed to. All right, the bed itself is assembled. Uh, we're gonna work on the cap now, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and take some measurements and I'll probably cut the short ends first and then take measurements from point to point to get the long ends. And then we're just gonna screw those down. Uh, I don't need to tack them in with nails because they're setting on top of the bed and so they'll be stable enough for me to screw them in.
All right, that's going to wrap this one up, guys. I uh, hope that was helpful. hope that it inspires you guys to get creative on some of your gardening projects. And like I said, if there's anything I missed, uh, I'll try and respond to comments after I post the video and try and help you guys out. But I felt like it turned out pretty good. I felt like the design that we came up with at the beginning uh, worked for the most part. There was a couple of things I had to adjust because I didn't account for the locations where it was welded and kind of a little wonky almost. Um, but anyways, like I said, I think it turned out great. Um, we've still got to do some clear coat, which I'm just going to do. And Jessica can show that when she fills it up and starts planting stuff in it. Because um, I've got some other things i got to get to today. So thank you guys, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.